Hey gang, welcome back to Wilson Combat. My name is Masad Ayub. I'm one of the regular content providers. And all of us look to your comments for the ideas for the next videos. One asks, could Mass talk about the different guns that he carried over the years in law enforcement? Forty-some years sworn, uh, eight years patrolman on the first department, uh, two years sergeant, six as lieutenant on the second, and 27 as captain on the third and final. We went through a bunch of different guns. Uh, I worked primarily for small departments, and there there was often a little bit more latitude than you might have in a big agency where everybody's going to carry the same gun and hopefully one size fits all. I started in the 1970s. It was pretty much revolver time back then. The issue gun was the Smith & Wesson Model 10, 38 Special. And when the chief swore me in, he said, you can carry what you want so long as it's at least 38 Special. Well, I had what I thought was the ideal service revolver, a pre-Model 25 Smith & Wesson. Uh, was known as the 1955 Target Model, 45 ACP. Uh, Nolan Santi, one of the best gunsmiths in New Hampshire, where I lived and worked, and really one of the best in the country, had already uh, chopped the barrel to four inches for another officer, and I got it from him after he retired. The advantage of that gun, I always liked the 45, and with the half moon clips, it was much faster to reload. Uh, back in the mid 70s, almost nobody was carrying speed loaders. Uh, it was presumed that they were too ugly and bulky and they didn't look streamlined on the duty belt. So I went to a local leather maker and he took a Leica camera case, uh, dyed it black for me and put uh, belt loops on it. And that held enough uh, moon clips for four reloads. Uh, the gun was fast, the gun was accurate, I was very happy with it. Uh, about a year in, the chief walked by while I was photocopying some documents. He glanced at my holster and he says, is that a highway patrolman you're carrying? And I said, no, it's a 1955 Target. And he said, what's that? And I explained. He said, why are you carrying a 45 revolver? And I said, well, because you won't let me carry a 45 automatic. And he gave me a genuinely hurt look, and he said, you're my firearms instructor. I never said you couldn't. You can carry what you want. And I was like, really? And the next day, I had a Colt 45 Auto on and carried that for some time. I always thought and still think that it was an excellent police weapon. I liked the proprietary nature of the user factor of the cocked and locked carry. You had the shoot ability, eight rounds instead of six and uh, soon the, eventually the Wilson Combat magazines came out with eight. It was handy, it was comfortable, and it had a power level I appreciated. In the early days, you couldn't really get uh, good hollow points for it. I started off carrying that uh, lead-nosed uh, Norma. It uh, would not feed worth a damn, so I'd have one of those in the chamber and a magazine of ball. Then, about that time, Remington brought out their 185 grain jacketed hollow point and uh, that fed through anything that would feed ball and that was my duty load for quite a while. 1978 we got a new chief from a big department who was horrified to find out in his new department us the guys on the pistol team were carrying Colt 45 autos. Prior to his arrival the preceding chief had bought all Smith & Wesson Model 66 357 Magnums. The early Model 66's were were not what Smith & Wesson was supposed to be. The, uh, the stainless steel uh, overheated rapidly with the magnum loads. The gas ring at the front of the cylinder would expand and lock the damn thing up. So I had wound up being a shepherd for about 25 of those, 24 of those. And they were constantly going through the gun shop, uh, the, the local gunsmith who did armory work for us. And a few had to go back to the factory. Well, the new chief from the big city was horrified, and the uh, first thing he did was no auto-loading pistols, we'll carry revolvers like real cops. I said, well, that's okay, so I went to the Model 58 uh, 41 Magnum for a while, and it didn't really make that much sense to me. And the same size uh, speed loader pouch, I could carry two of the full moon clips that we now had for the 45 ACP revolver, uh, instead of one 41 mag speed loader. So I went back to my old 45 1955 target. Then the chief said, 
nope, uh, issue gun is 357 mag, all you guys will carry 357 mag. So I had a four inch barrel put on my Moran Custom Colt Python that I had been shooting PPC with. Carried that for a while until he decided, nope, we must have total uniformity, we'll all have the Model 66. So I went out and bought my own, uh, brought it immediately to Andy Cannon, one of the all-time great uh, pistol smiths in uh, Wolfboro, New Hampshire. And he slicked it up and mainly he heliarc welded that damn gas ring into the cylinder forever so the gun would work. And that's what I carried until uh, I left the department uh, eight years in. The next department, the issue gun, was the Model 13, uh, the Blue Steel uh, K-Frame 357 Magnum. Uh, I had one of those that I had slicked up. Frank Morabito uh, put his uh, manual safety on it. Rick DeVoid uh, did a double action only action job for me. But most of the time I carried the Colt 45 Auto and on special occasions that sweet Moran Python 4 inch. And occasionally my Model 66 which worked and had been modified to Magna Trigger, uh, the one smart gun that ever worked. Uh, again, a Rick DeVoid uh, modification. The uh, magnetic ring interfaced with a magnet uh, inside the gun to activate it. In 1988, we adopted the Smith & Wesson 4506, uh, the fourth department in the country to do so. And that turned out to be an outstanding service pistol. Nine rounds, the thing would feed just about anything an accurate pistol, and uh, we carried them on safe uh, for the weapon retention factor. We taught each of our officers as they're drawing, because it was mounted, the safety was mounted on the slide like a Beretta, to thrust the thumb upward to pop it off. I left there in 1990 to go to the next agency, and my final agency at that time, the issue gun was the Ruger 357 mag revolver, but we had the option of other guns, so I was back to the 1911-45. In 1993, we decided to adopt one standard issue 45 auto, and to no one's surprise more than mine, the Ruger P90 beat out the SIG P220 and the uh, Smith & Wesson 4506 in our testing. That gun never fit my hand, but uh, my hand learned to fit the gun. We found them extraordinarily reliable, uh, over the years, we supplemented those with other guns, and as time went on and policies changed, when we were allowed to carry guns of our choice, I went back primarily to the 1911. Over the years, I had carried briefly the SIG 226-9, SIG 220-45, HKP 79 mm for a while, but always did go back to that 1911. Uh, we went to the uh, Ruger P345 in 2005, and in 2015 adopted the same gun our police had, our state police had, the Smith & Wesson Military and Police 45, which also turned out to be a very functional weapon. I was still carrying the privately owned department approved 1911 uh, when I retired in 2017, and that basically was, was it for me. I was allowed as firearms instructor to occasionally carry other guns. And when we were looking for new uh, security holsters, the Glock had by then become by far the most popular pistol nationwide. And all the new holsters were made first for the Glock before anything else. So carrying those on duty as kind of a beta tester, uh, I carried primarily uh, for probably two or three years, uh, the Glock 22 40 caliber. Uh, with the New York Trigger. Uh, that won the state shoot for me, I think, three times in a row. And I was very happy with that gun, and I still own it. So that was one, one part-time cop's odyssey. Uh, I was fully sworn for part-time. I learned a whole lot more in the 19 years I spent as chair of the Firearms and Deadly Force Training Committee for American Society of Law Enforcement Trainers. That gave me access to police from all over the country and all their collective feedback. We watched the uh, transition of the striker-fired guns. They've been ergonomic, they've been economic, and they've adapted well into the, the new generation that we have now of uh, red dot sights and the weapon-mounted lights. So over the years, it's been quite a transition I found if I had to go back today and they'd let me, uh, I'd still be carrying the old 1911 probably, 
but I've learned to appreciate the, uh, the newer stuff. And basically the question was, what was one guy's experience? That was mine. But there are 800,000 or so cops in America and each of them has their story to tell. It's been an interesting ride and we've learned a lot from it. And I'm happy to have been able to share it with you today. Be sure to comment, we always read your comments and it's from your comments that a lot of our new material derives. Thanks for watching the Wilson Combat Channel. We'll see you the next time.